In this video, I want to talk about the coagulation cascade. The coagulation cascade really refers to secondary hemostasis. So hemostasis refers to the stopping of blood. So if you have an injury, you want to stop the blood from leaving. You don't want to lose liters of blood. So we have a system in place that stops the blood from leaving. And this is referred to hemostasis as primary hemostasis, where you form just the platelet plug, which is very quick, but it's unstable. And then secondary hemostasis, which basically seals the plug and forms a clot. So you can imagine there's all these platelets, they adhere to the site of injury, but that's kind of loose. So you want to seal it up. So you just use glue to put all these platelets together and form a stable clot. And then also red blood cells swing by and they get stuck onto this fibrin polymers. And therefore you have then finally a clot. And that's really the result of secondary hemostasis. So we already know what happens during primary hemostasis. I've described this in another video. And now we have to really figure out what happens when we initiate the coagulation cascade. What is the net result of the coagulation cascade? The result of the coagulation cascade is a production of fibrin molecules. So these fibrin molecules, that's what you want to get. And the fibrin molecules can self-polymerize. So once you have these molecules, they self-polymerize. There's a factor that helps to make it a little bit more hard and even more stable. And then you form these polymers and you glue up kind of the clot. And that's then very stable. So how do you get to fibrin? Well, there's a precursor in our blood, which is called fibrinogen. Always when you see the ending ogen, things like angiotensinogen, these are always precursor molecules. So there's some proteolytic cleavage chopped off, and then you have fibrin. So who does this chopping off? This is a molecule called thrombin. This is actually also not immediately active, as with all the other clotting factors. They are all circulating in our blood inactive, and then there's some cleavage and they become active. I simplify it now in a way that I'm not showing always the activation process. I'm just going to show you the active molecule, and that's thrombin, sometimes referred as factor 2. So thrombin does this cleavage of fibrinogen to fibrin, and then you know what's going to happen. How is thrombin activated? Thrombin is activated by factor 10. So factor 10 activates thrombin, and then thrombin can do the final cleavage of fibrinogen to fibrin. And actually, there's a cool factor also necessary. It's factor 5. So you go 10, 5, 2, 1. So it's all kind of little dollar bills. 10, 5, 2, 1. Fibrin also referred sometimes as factor 1. And this is what is referred as the common pathway. This is really the final steps of the coagulation cascade. So next, what we want to discuss is how do we get factor 10 activated? Who does that? Well, there's actually two ways how you can get factor 10 activated. There is a so-called extrinsic pathway, and that relies on tissue factor and factor 7. So extrinsic refers to that it's not within the blood vessel. So if you have an injury, there's subendothelium exposed, there's tissue exposed, and this contains tissue factor. And then tissue factor together with factor 7 in the blood can then activate factor 10. Factor 7 can also make a little detour. Instead of directly activating factor 10, it can also activate factor 9, and then factor 9 together with factor 8 can activate factor 10. So it can go two ways, either directly to factor 10 or make a little detour. There's also another way how you can activate factor 10, and this is called via the intrinsic pathway. It is called intrinsic pathway because it is intrinsic in our blood. So all factors that are required to activate it are intrinsic, found in the blood. And this requires a molecule ca called kininogen together with Kali Green, and they can form a complex with factor 12. Factor 12 becomes activated, this activates factor 11, and this activates factor 9, and then factor 9 with factor 8 can activate factor 10. So this is referred as the intrinsic pathway, because we all know when we're just sitting on a 
airplane or for a, for very long hours, we can get a blood clot without any injury, without this extrinsic pathway. So this would rely on the intrinsic pathway. However, generally spoken, this is way more important because factor seven is a little bit more powerful in a way that it can directly activate factor 10 and also can do this little detour. But no matter what the activation is, we just have to get to factor 10. If we have factor 10, we know how the system runs. Then we get our thrombin and thrombin activates the most important component here to chop off fibrin from fibrinogen. And this polymerizes and that seals this platelet plaque forming a clot. We also should be aware that eventually this clot also needs to be degraded and this is done by a process called fibrinolysis. So there are enzymes that can cut off this fibrin strands so that we can dissolve the clot. This concludes the video on the coagulation pathway.